Well, good morning and it's so good to be with you today for the online service for Turning Point. I'm Pastor Norma Kayser. And today, I'm going to be sharing with you beginning a life and ending your life on fire. And you know, there are so many of us, myself included, that when I came to the Lord, there was such fire, such excitement, such power. But then as we go along our life, stuff happens. And I want to share an example today from the life of Elijah. Now, Elijah the prophet in the Bible, when we meet him in 1 Kings, and we're going to look at 1 Kings 18 and 19, he was a prophet of fire. He knew fire. And he was living in a very difficult time in the history of God's people. So Elijah the Tishite, he lived in the northern kingdom of Israel in a time when King Ahab and his very wicked wife Jezebel were ruling and they actively turned the people away from God. In fact, Queen Jezebel was the daughter of the King of Sidon and she was a Baal worshipper. So to please her with that alliance, Ahab built a temple to Baal and Queen Jezebel brought 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah into the land of Israel. God's people went into the midst of this. Here was a lone voice, or we thought it was a lone voice anyhow, Elijah trying to bring them back to God and his goodness and his promises and to remind them that they were the people of God. And so because of uh, them turning their backs on God, Elijah said there's going to be years of catastrophe and there was, there was a severe drought. And at the very end of that, God told Elijah to go and give a message to King Ahab that there was going to be a competition, a competition to end all competitions on Mount Carmel where he called all of the prophets of Baal and all of the prophets of Asherah and they were all going to have a competition to see which God was a real God. And how that was going to happen is that the prophets of Baal, first of all, were going to build an altar and to put their sacrifice on it. But there was one condition. Their God had to send down the fire. And whichever God, the God of Elijah or the God of Baal, they were going to be the ones that would win the God who sent down the fire onto the sacrifice to consume him. So as they met up there on Mount Carmel, Elijah was certainly outnumbered there, but he knew his God. And so first of all, the prophets of Baal, they pranced and they chanted around their sacrifice. They called on their God, the God of Baal. And by the way, the God of Baal was a God of thunder, lightning, the God of dew and rain. So if he was a real God, he could have easily through lightning sent to fire. But for hours they pranced and they danced around this altar. There was no response from the God of Baal. And I love this. Then Elijah just quietly and calmly came to the altar after building it. He got... 12 jars of water to be poured over that altar and then he prayed a simple prayer a simple prayer to God acknowledging God the true God of heavens and earth and boom just like that the fire fell and the sacrifice and the stones were consumed everyone that was there fell back at the power of that fire that came from heaven and as a result of that, the children of Israel turned back to God because they could see the power and the might of God through this fire. And the prophets of Baal were killed. And you would think, now that's it. Wow, this is the moment. Everything is going to go well from here on. The people have come to God. You could even call this a revival of the, the people coming back to God. And that's going to be it. Things are going to go well from then on. But no. That is not often how it happens. Then the enemy comes, tries to come back in like a flood. 
and the demonic realm gets stirred up and the difficult things of everyday life begin again. Queen Jezebel was murderous when she heard that our prophets of Baal and Asherah had been killed. She didn't care that fire had fallen from heaven. She began a search and destroy mission for Elijah's life. And Elijah, fearing for his life, fled. Have you ever felt like fleeing when difficult things have happened? Well, you can identify with Elijah. He's running for his life and he runs into the wilderness. And we all at times have had wilderness times in our life. And he sits down under a broom tree, under the shade of a tree, and he just wants to die. He says, I have had enough. And sometimes we feel like we have just simply had enough with all the things that have happened in our life. We began with fire, but where is that fire now? And he said, I am no better than my ancestors. And in that statement, we see that Elijah is even grappling with his identity here. Who am I to be even called? Who am I to do anything different from anyone? I'm just the same as my ancestor. But in that moment, thankfully, an angel comes and strengthens him and says, come on, get up and refreshes him, revitalizes him. But then Elijah journeys from that place and now He's on Mount Horeb, but he's in a cave. So he's gone, not just from the wilderness, but now he's in a cave. Have you ever felt like you've been in a cave? I certainly have. You know, my Christian life began with a, a powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit and unbelievable miracles and a touch of God. The fire, the power, the exhilaration was there. But stuff then happens. Stuff happens as we continue to serve the Lord. And there can be wilderness times, but times also when we can go into that deep, deep and dark cave. And Elijah's in the cave. He's having a pity party. He really feels alone. He feels abandoned. He feels like he's the only one that's truly serving and following God. And God calls to him in that cave, like he calls to us in that cave. He says, come out of that cave. Come on, come out of it. And so uh, Elijah's having a bit of a whinge. And guess what? God can cope with that. He says, I've been zealous for God, but I haven't seen anything. I've been zealous, but I'm the only one left. They've all tried to kill me. He really is in a bad state. So God sends a powerful wind along the surface of the cave. He sends an earthquake and yes, he sends fire. Here is fire again in Elijah's life, but this time it's different. It says that God was not in that fire. You know, we can't just live on adrenaline. We can't just live on those exciting mountaintop experiences where there's froth and bubble all the time. And God is not in the earthquake and the wind and the fire, even though he sent it. God comes along with a still, small, gentle whisper. I love that. He comes with a whisper and he says, come out of that cave. What are you doing here? I have things for you to do. And Elijah says, well, you know, as we know, he says, well, I'm the only one left. I've been zealous for you, but God says, come on, get up and get out of this cave. I have new assignments for you. You know, God knew that he was weary. God knew the great persecution and opposition that had come against him. God knew the murderous threats and the difficult things that Elijah was feeling. But God encouraged him with that still, small, gentle whisper to get up and get going again, that he hadn't bypassed him, he hadn't abandoned him, that he was there and it was a new season that he was going to come into. And God gave him instructions to get up to anoint Hazel, king of Aram, and Jehu as the new king of Israel, Jehu in the place of Ahab and Jezebel. And he also 
encouraged and commanded Elijah to go and to find Elisha and to anoint him to succeed him as a prophet. You know, there's no success without a successor. That's a true statement. So in even asking Elijah to go and anoint these new leaders, God is answering the call of Elijah's heart. He said to Elijah, Jehu is going to kill your enemies. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. And those that Jehu doesn't deal with in the house of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, this terribly wicked and demonic reign, then Elisha was going to finish off. So get up, get up, your enemies will be dealt with. And by the way, he says to Elijah, and this is a revelation to Elijah, I have 7,000 other prophets and people who have not bowed down and worshipped Baal. I reserve 7,000 just like you who also were hiding in caves. That's a true lockdown, isn't it? It was a dark time, just like many of us have gone through over the last two years. There are some similarities here. So Elijah got up and he went and he anointed Jehu to be king instead of King Ahab. And Jehu dealt with the house of King Ahab. He went and he found Elisha and he anointed him and Elisha became a great help. And the mantle was passed on from Elijah to Elisha. And, you know, we can identify with this, this story of Elijah that we read about in 1 Kings 18 and 19. You know, we also face enemies, enemies and uh, a society that becomes more godless and promotes godlessness. People who seem to have fallen away and become apathetic in their faith. Sometimes we feel like we don't have anybody that's supporting us and we're standing alone for righteousness and speaking up for God. Sometimes there is, of course, direct persecution and punishing of believers who, who trust in God. Or just the sheer exhaustion and adrenaline dump of always you know, working for God and not seeing much happening. And we can even feel like this over the last years. You know, we've been zealous for God, but what have we seen happen? Just one law after another that is anti-God that continues to cripple Christianity across this nation. And we can get a martyr mentality. We can start having a pity party and think, well, you know, I've done all of this and there's nobody else and we've become even self-righteous in that. Or we can even sink into a dark cave of depression and become overwhelmed with fear. And I love this story of Elijah because it shows real emotions. It shows a, a real struggle here in Elijah's life. He's known the fire, but now he's in the dark cave of depression. And that is something that we can often identify with. But what is the solution to this? The solution is, first of all, come out of the cave. Secondly, hear the gentle whisper of God to refocus, to remind us and to refresh us. And then the presence of God to give us strength and the new focus that brings the new things, the new season, the taking of action. You know, for some people, just taking action, knowing that you can take action and beginning to do those new things and taking action with those new things brings a new fire, new life, new hope. And realizing that you're not alone, that there are 7,000 others that have not bowed the knee, that there are others that are faithfully serving God. They may have been hidden through the lockdown, but they are rising and they're coming out of the caves as well into the light. And finding your support and your successor, the one that is going to walk alongside you. You know, that kindred spirit 
in faith where you can bounce off one another. And that's exactly what God did for Elijah and he's going to do for you as you look to him, as you rely on him. <clears throat> you know, it has been a difficult time in the history of Victoria, Australia and the world and we can get disillusioned or discouraged because we feel whereas Christianity, churches have closed down and ministers have disappeared of the gospel. But you know, God will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And his church is the answer to the world to show the manifest power of God on this earth through you and me. So I want to encourage you today. God doesn't want you just to begin your life on fire. He wants you to end your life on fire. And when we think about Elijah's end as he was uh, just traveling through the nation, that nation at that time with Elisha following him, God swept down with the chariot of fire and picked Elijah up and took him to heaven. So he began his life on fire and he finished his life on fire. I don't know whether you and I are going to be swept up into heaven on a chariot of fire, but I want to encourage you, finish your life on fire for God. Recognize the still small voice of God and be encouraged to come out of that cave because as we come out of lockdown, as we come out of what has happened over the last years, God has new assignments, new tasks, new action for us to do and he has it. He has our back and he will do it. Never be lacking in zeal but keep it going. And I want to finish by reading some verses from Hebrews chapter 10 which really encourage me and I want to encourage you with these verses as well today. So in Hebrews 10 verse 36 to 39 and it says here, Hebrews 10, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you'll receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And, but my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed but to those who have faith and are saved. And I want to challenge you today. If you're feeling like you're in a cave, God is saying, come out of that cave. And I'd like to pray with you right now because emotions are real. Depression and anxiety and fear are real. But God does not want us to stay in the wilderness. And he certainly doesn't want us to stay in that dark cave. So dear Heavenly Father, I pray for each person listening today. Lord, they began their life on fire, but maybe some of them, they're feeling like they're in the wilderness or in the dark cave and they're saying, I wished I could just die. But God, you're coming to speak to them today and you're saying, get up, get out of that cave. I have things for you to do. I'm going to refocus, re-empower and refresh you. I'm going to re-energize you. I'm going to give you a new season that's going to come, a season of fruitfulness, a season of seeing the joy of the Lord, a season of seeing enemies put asunder and the promises of God coming for your life. So Lord, any that don't know you as a Lord and Saviour, I pray right now you will draw them in their hearts to come, Lord God, and accept the work that Jesus did on the cross, to ask for forgiveness for all the things that they've done, even not living their life with you, Lord God, in the centre. And I pray that from this moment on, as they invite you into their life, they will commit their lives to living for you and outworking the God-given purpose and future that you already prepared for them before they were even formed in their mother's womb. So, Lord, bless each person, Lord God. Help us to begin our life on fire and to finish our life on fire in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Amen. 
I hope this message has challenged and encouraged you today. So God bless you.